Good day, everyone. I'm Brian Williams. Today, I want to speak to you about returning to work, back to the office, and about some considerations, especially for those of us who have the power to influence the operation and the workplace um, and workflow of our various places of work. Today, we may be primarily concerned about the imminent health risk due to the pandemic. However, we have always been plagued with other work-related concerns long before COVID-19. When I speak about returning to a healthy workplace, I'm referring to a healthy workplace experience. Now, this is an interesting article that I came across that describes the workplace as a fishbowl. Very interesting. It reads, this is a traditional office. It's, pretty, it's a pretty simple place. Very contained and not very exciting. The fish all look alike. It doesn't take much to make them happy and they are easily replaced. It was fine, but we didn't really know any better. Now, now that we are forced to take a break from our place of work, we can really reflect and ask ourselves the question, is my workplace really a healthy work experience? Now a colleague of mine sent pictures of my workplace, highlighting the emptiness that now exists. There are even tumbleweeds for the dramatic effect. So I got to doing some reflection of my own, thinking about my workplace. Um, there is my desk there that's highlighted in yellow. My new workplace is now at home and it has evolved over the past 17 months. It started from a shared tabletop with my son who is also doing work from home or should I say school from home. To sit, it then transitioned to a sit stand desk that I regularly took with me sometimes on the porch to escape the monotony of the study. Not to mention the summer heat inside the house. I do miss the AC in the office. And now, my workplace has become my very own control center. As I have moved most, if not all, of my operations online and to remote communication. Now, most of us had to redesign our homes to accommodate our new work area. This gave me an opportunity to get creative and also to reflect on some research I had done about workplaces. It was Winston Churchill that said, never let a good crisis go to waste. So I want you to join me for a few minutes to explore what is meant by a healthy workplace experience. And in the interim, we can answer the question that perhaps has been asked by a few of us. Do I really want to go back to my office? Now, COVID-19 caused physical barriers. However, we overcame them using technology. Many of us relied heavily on computers, tablets, and cell phones. We also relied on remote meeting software, remote access software, and online uh, video web platforms. Not to mention, new approaches to our workflow using automation, smart devices, internet of things, that might be a new one. We'll explore this term later in the presentation. For those of us that has made these new tools and has discovered these new tools, we ask ourselves, you know, why didn't I use these tools before? Most of them were already there. <laughs> After all, Zoom did exist nine years before COVID-19. For some of us, it's too easy to not go in the office. So I wonder for our managers, our employees, uh, employers rather, or supervisors, how do we create an environment that people want to come back to? For some of us, the office represents an environment that's very static, restrictive, at times even uncomfortable. In addition to being concerned about our health, 
We should also be concerned about our mental health as this can be directly linked to workplace exper um, experience. So firstly, let's identify the primary features or experiences in working from home and compare that with working from the office. At home, one could choose where to work. Um, you could work in your couch or even in your bed. For the most part, you can even choose if and when to meet persons. If it's time for a meal, most of us have a fully functional kitchen readily available. However, a lot of us, a lot of us here um, don't like the work from home because of the many distractions that it brings. This is perhaps the number one reason why some of us would rather work from the office. Now, working from the office definitely does not have these um, disadvantages such as distraction and noise and these things in most cases. However, the workplace does have its fair share of challenges, including things like a rigid workspace, not to mention for some of us, the eye of Sauron watching over us while we work. So what if we could grab some of the features from our work from home situation, but remove the distractions of the home, yet keep the flexibility, the autonomy um, that we have just discovered at home? Well, minus the ability to work in our underwear, right? Now, enter the activity-based workplace. The concept of activity-based working is to have the user select the best place and method to work based on things like mood, situation, and even availability of workspace. In this kind of workspace, individual employees are not assigned to a particular workstation. To make work effective and efficient and more enjoyable for both organization and the employee, they are free to select the area of, um, that they choose to work. So we'll call this ABW, which is activity-based working. And it focuses on the employees and provides the freedom for them to decide for themselves how to work, where to work, which tools to use, and with whom to collaborate with to get the work done. The workplace is designed in such a way that it allows them to perform different activities over the course of the workday. Now, this type of workspace allows for a person to work alone with a high degree of concentration and focus. It also allows them to have a combination of privacy and small, limited um, collaboration with maybe groups of two or four persons. Also, it gives collaboration areas for persons to coordinate or generate knowledge, a process, a product, or work in a hybrid area uh, that allows for brief interruptions that might even help to spontaneously generate conversation, which might in fact lead to ideas or a sense of community and belonging. Now, this type of workspace views remote work as just another type of space. It's a world where work from home is just another room at the office. This workspace would liberate office ergonomics, allowing its users to disconnect, reset, recharge via using a number of work configurations. Whether it's a traditional desk, a couch, a beanbag, or even a hammock. Yes, I said it, a hammock at the workplace, why not? Currently, most of us work from home and we are free to choose where and how we work. We've got, gotten good practice over the last few months. So sure, some of us might choose to work at a desk, but wouldn't it be nice to once in a while change our positions and be able to work efficiently um, at the same time? Now you might be wondering, all right, this sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? Well, what I will say is that radical change requires radical thinking and radical action. 
in this workplace no one owns a desk but yet everyone owns the workplace so abw activity-based working is about connecting work activities in an environment that supports or even best improve the task that you have to do in this environment some or all the emp or even all the employees share the entire space instead of having a single space assigned to them now the reasons for implementing an abw activity-based workspace will include things like reducing your overhead costs saving space increasing flexibility as a matter of fact another reason of using an activity-based workspace might very well allow us to be more compliant with the COVID-19 related government restrictions that we find ourselves in for our workplaces. Now, while the idea for employees, um, to, for our employees to change settings depending on their activity, it turns out that in reality, we do like to return to the same spot, thus naturally. Unsurprisingly, we human beings, we like our habits. And another reason for this behavior is the fact that often more affinity, I would say, and connection with a particular colleague might cause us to always want to sit together. These are just some of the natural tendencies that we have. Now, in Canada, government office, ABW is currently being introduced. They have dedicated entire sections of their government website to help educate workers about the changes that are currently taking place in the offices. Let's give it a listen and hear what they have to say about um, activity-based work. Maybe you've heard some buzz around the activity-based workplace. You're probably wondering what it's about. Well, Activity-Based Workplace is about creating a work environment customized to the needs of people. It is about creating the best circumstances for each activity that employees perform each day. But workplace modernization is not just about the space. It is about the balanced integration of the physical space with the right technological tools and the adoption of an innovative and progressive culture. It is when these three components work together that we build modern and flexible work environments that enable organizations to meet their goals or to achieve their vision. When we assign each employee to a desk, whether in an office or in a cubicle, there is an expectation that this is where they work. Things are changing and we need to change the way we work to keep up. Work should no longer be seen as a place you go, but rather as a thing you do. With the technology that enables us to be mobile, and with the increasing need for collaboration, assigned desks are becoming more and more irrelevant. Our office designs and our culture need to catch up to the new way we actually work. What you will find in an activity-based workplace is a variety of work points, where on any given day, any employee can choose to work on a range of activities that best suit their current task and personal work style. You will find a variety of different workspaces laid out in small neighborhoods. Open collaboration areas of various sizes and shapes are set away from individual work areas. Personal storage, file storage, visual privacy, noise levels and maximized lighting are all taken into consideration when laying out the various spaces and work points. The activity-based workplace sees space as a tool, not unlike technology. By providing a wider variety of options, we gain greater flexibility, we become more productive, and we reinforce trust and employee empowerment. Success is not about the number of staff sitting at their desk anymore. It's about finding the best way to integrate flexible workplaces, enabling technology and the right mindsets to support it. Are you ready for the future? Let's do it. So this is the classic pyramid, I would say, restrictive office typology that exists in many workplaces today. 
and it was really born out of the need to be efficient. I don't mean to be dramatic with the whole Eye of Sauron thing, but I, I think some of us can relate. Now, there are a few side effects to this current way of working. Firstly, it's an exclusivity-based workplace, meaning it's built for restriction, single-purpose spaces. For example, I exclusively work at this desk. We exclusively meet in this conference room. We exclusively give large offices to our managers and executives. You know, you get the idea. Now, as Maya Angelou said, you can't really know where you're going until you know where you've been. Let's see how we got here. Now, office design is over 400 years old. The word office is derived from a Latin word, duty, and this existed in various forms such as monasteries and libraries and studies. Essentially, these places are pri primarily existed for the systematic storage of records. Now, in the late 18th century, the factory floor could be considered the first workplace typology. And in this post-industrial era, you know, you could imagine that it really laid a negative foundation for the, uh, for the workplace. As we approach the 18th century, the office required the use of record-keeping mechanisms to further help structure the work. In these early spaces, it was very limited, usually one window, one entryway, and basically the owners themselves were often out conducting business while the clerk stayed behind producing an endless array of monotonous filing and document related tasks. Does this sound familiar? Well, it's still being done today. Now, soon after the office worker, included not only clerks but many other forms of administrative workers which then prompted the need to have improved efficiency via the use of systems. As a matter of fact, two of the most influential systems adapted in history was the use of the assembly line, this was by Henry Ford, and the rigid business principles and this was called Taylorism and this was by Frederick Taylor and he was a real activist for efficiency. So basically at this point, not much thought was given to workplace safety and the comfort, mental strain, it was just all about efficiency. Now soon after the open office came into being, therefore, and this was even before the cubicle based office, despite open offices kind of being perceived as modern, it, it was actually earlier than, than the cubicle. Now, in the 19th century, the architect Frank Lloyd Wright, um, he sought to utilize architecture and design to alleviate this regimented uh, tailorist workplace, right? He was best known for the introduction of natural light into the workspace via large open area, hence the open office. So this was basically achieved by giving, paying attention to the comfort of workers and making provisions for air conditioning, built-in furniture and a range of other uh, features. You know, the, he used a, a people-oriented approach, right? Um, and this was used, this example you're seeing here is from the S.C. Johnson um, Wax Building, a very famous architectural um, building. So, so the design features continue to be integrated in the workplace, but through the arrangement of interior furniture, right? So Herman Miller, which is a furniture giant that still exists today, very prominent um, furniture company. Um, they had designers such as Robert Prosp, um, and they realized they needed more, let's call it sophisticated furniture to, fa to facilitate the the emerging knowledge workers uh, you, you're talking about people like um like architects and lecturers and um doctors engineers pharmacists these these were who these are who are knowledge workers right people who basically think for a living so 
they designed what we would call the action office and basically it supported multiple workstations that could be fitted together and um, within a space so, you know one of the key features was that they were highly flexible allowing a company to modify and kind of transform the work area however they seem fit so the mod the simplification of the action office into the cubicle um it began to really uh contribute to the reduction in workplace efficiency which is kind of ironic because it was developed to increase um efficiency and here we have how we came to the modular office or what we call the cubicle so even though the action office seemed to have solved well at least partially the privacy issues from the open office um, the modular office space was adapted worldwide it was a smashing hit and it, it began to lean more towards it primarily being a method of reducing costs and implementations so as a result most specific human and wellness product um, productivity oriented features were abandoned in favor of more economic and space saving features eventually the action office became known as the cubicle and hence began the monolithic brain of terror of the cubicle so how do we move to the next generation of the office the activity based workplace now most first world countries has already or is already in the age of activity based workplace and the focus has really expanded from individual productivity into team effectiveness now for abw to be a reality it's not only about the workplace design it's also about a cultural shift among people that requires the support of technology design technology people these are the trifecta of uh, abw space so in looking on design this would include the act of designing the space or building the interior furniture and layout to sup uh, um, that needs to support this mode of working you would need to cater for focus areas um, task and work areas collaboration areas social areas you know think about kitchen coffee bar lunch tables somewhere that that kind of encourages chat um, then think about other considerations like to have plenty of options for people to sit down at a desk stand up or otherwise change their position throughout the day so this is all an example of the considerations that have to take place for design now technology is a major component and to give you a, an idea of how technology well has developed over the years and how it can help support the abw let's look at the example of a simple hvac unit right which is essentially the ac unit a large ac unit for office buildings now let's look for example heating which has to be controlled manually maybe by a switch now the same thing would have to do be done for cooling you know you need to switch it on and off and let's say maybe you have another system air purification these these are all components that have to be switched on and off and all of these components were basically introduced in between the 1800s to the 1900s now in, in the 80s now is where they start to be automated right and then we see where in the 21st century we used to bring these similar technologies into maybe a small interface where similar working technologies could be controlled by just one interface so if we maybe look on another system such as maybe fire suppression well the same process would basically apply where you would have a series of manual switches that eventually became automated and then they became housed in a some kind of smart device now internet of things remember that term from earlier in the presentation now this is what is going to facilitate 
the activity based uh, workplace and this is where now you bring multiple smart things together in a i guess you could say even a smarter thing right so the internet of things will allow for the connecting of all components to everything else which would lead to an unprecedented amount of automation for a variety of technologies this sounds um, maybe good but also scary i mean what are some of the iot devices that we know today well for example the amazon alexa that's an iot device i mean think about it um where is john working today alexa um i would like to work from hope to from from home today can i work from home today you know um is the garden workplace available copy the latest documents to my cloud drive you know these are all things that uh, internet of things device for example would bring together and it would allow multiple smart things to communicate together right now if you think about it because of this new approach um, with, that require um, less physical infrastructure um, you, the, the employee doesn't need to be tethered to a static location and if i mean really we're forced to use this type of technology due to the current pandemic i mean our workplaces are pretty much closed all of our files and forms and file jackets are all locked away in the office and many systems and procedures had to be digitized and placed in cloud location to support us not being at our desk so many of us has just now discovered the benefits of not being tethered to a desk and being able to have these smart devices to help us out. Now, perhaps one of the greatest obstacles that will hinder us from exploring uh, activity-based workplace is the it's mine mentality. Uh, activity-based workplace will require quite a culture change and, and a different way of thinking of how we know before I mean in this kind of workplace based on this analogy you're seeing here there exist many toys as a matter of fact there are more toys than people can play with if I'm using this analogy with this person hugging the teddy bear because you know she's saying it's mine but there is a box full of toys including teddy bears and many other toys and that's kind of the analogy of an activity based um, workplace you know the, you know think about it on any given day an employee might work from half a dozen different places they might start the day at the desk in a shared private office maybe with the door closed to get some focus work done then they might go for a video call down the hall in another room. Next, they might go for coffee, stretch their legs. For more creative tasks, they might prefer sitting in a comfy chair with their feet up. You know, if there's a team meeting, you know, you need a whiteboard and maybe a larger area for a quick phone call. They can go to the phone booth or maybe walk outside. I'm just saying it's just a variety of places and options, you know many toys to play with uh, there are much more toys than the teddy bear so to speak so these three pillars are the foundation of an activity-based workplace all the other benefits and features would depend on how well these pillars stand up in some workplaces some pillars might need more reinforcement than others for example you might have a case where culture is the major challenge but you have all the technology in the world and you have the best designer in the world right so the, you know this the, the the application of these pillars might vary but you know some real there are some real advantages here i mean definitely it's perfect for the post pandemic workplace where we have all now explored multiple ways of working um it definitely definitely 
after all this experience we have gotten a chance to explore working from home now it might also be it given us the opportunity to experience what we sometimes call flexible work times where um, persons get to decide to an extent their working hours and the location in which they work um, research done by the Center for People and Buildings um, found that people in an ABW office environment experience more communication and knowledge exchange in general. Also, it's just better use of a workplace. It can also reduce costs because maybe not everybody needs to be at their desk at the same time. There are some people working in different locations, you know. So when you think about it, to, to, to really execute this type of workspace, companies might need to consult with a specific team. Um, think somebody like a think workplace strategy consultant, you know, some kind of um, corporation that has experience in data collection, design, change management. You know, the, the team would definitely have to consist of a professional designer, interior designer or architect, most definitely. Now, as I mentioned earlier, ABW is not a new concept. They have been data collected on the benefits and the efficiency of an ABW workplace over the years. One such is the 2017 Leesman report that shows the efficiency of an activity-based workplace arising from a global point of view. This research is a published survey that generates a simplified uh, KPI, they call it a LMI, right? Which is, um, a, they call it a Leesman index. So the survey received over 70,000 responses from over 600 workplaces across the world, which included a more than 10,000 ABW employees and about 23,000 traditional um, cubicle based employees. On average, the entire ABW group showed a significantly higher workplace effectiveness when compared to the traditional workplace. Now, this research would suggest that ABW depends primarily on the mobility the mobility of users utilizing the workplace as the more mobile they are the more they are able to move between various workplaces and to experience the advantages that abw provides so if you look at this chart you can see where there are four different categories the camper the timid traveler um, the intrepid explorer and the true transient, which is a person who uses multiple workplace um, settings and is rarely found at one location. So in an ABW um, location, users that have a higher level of mobility would see the benefits of, um, of productivity and workplace pride as you can see in the in the graph of course this is only achievable if they utilize the unique workplaces available to them so that is i guess the the catch as you could see now today abw has spawned a new way of thinking about the workplace that has become a catalyst for other ways of working um, one of the largest co-working entities in the world is called WeWork and they have more than 5,000 employees in over 200 countries. Surprisingly, WeWork actually imploded in 2019, right? And this was because of, you know, mismanagement, financial mismanagement. But however, the pandemic actually brought them back to life, which is interesting, you know? So, also, an example of a um, spin-off of ABW is what we call co-working. And this example can be found right here in Jamaica 
where the hub um, is a strategically um, provided co-working environment in which um, the design of the workplace cater to four modes of work independent shared space single working space relaxed lounge um, and this is in Kingston now as I wrap up this presentation I want to share just the small research which was done to explore ABW in a local context and my aim is to know if activity-based workplace design can make us excited um, to return to work. Now in 2019, and of course this was pre-COVID, I performed a small research to investigate this. I used a medium-sized publication publishing firm and this, this firm had a total of 15 full-time employees dividing amongst um, five major departments. So they had an editorial, marketing, accountant, sales, stock keeping. And the office comprised primarily of females and persons between the ages of 25 to 65. And that's the layout of the space. So the process used in analyzing the findings and observation during the research involved basically breaking down the data uh, you know whether it's observations and questionnaires into three main categories which we had looked on earlier which is people and attitudes design of the workplace and use of technology now after collecting the data via the observation and questionnaires a design proposal was presented showing what their new ABW office would look like and that's shown above most staff members primarily appreciated the openness of the design proposal, especially the modern approach to work processes um, that the design promoted. Now, the major concern with the proposal included the availability of workspace to work if it was in use by another staff member. Now, it was communicated that overall, there were more areas to work than the amount of staff members in the office. The new proposal had, uh, in this proposal, there are 15 staff members and there are 23 workspaces in, from which they can choose. So this would greatly reduce the, any possibility of conflict. Overall, the major concern with staff, unsurprisingly, was the relinquishing of exclusive access to their work area. They just could not get over not having a desk. Now, the majority of staff, however, I, um, agreed to at minimum, they would try activity-based workplace anyway, because it sounded interesting and it would allow the office to move in a modern direction and provide just an overall better work uh, experience. Um, so these were the proposed spaces um, that were um, that were proposed in the design. It was a focus area, communication area, landing area, and what we call a hive a hive area, and a collaboration area, multiple collaboration areas. Well, you can imagine due to financial limitation i was unable to totally outfit the entire office with all the new furniture and equipment i mean this would possibly cost millions of dollars if not maybe billions so i selected a simple space to build out and to prototype of course the most economical um abw work space so I chose to build a smart landing, which was meant to act as an easy perching spot to facilitate quick informal discussions and consultation. And that would benefit from the integrated technologies that's inside the table. So that you can see this is the design that was used and it was fully built. It was, it was fully designed, drawn and built. So the landing IoT which remember is the Internet of Things. It included an Alexa smart speaker, a smart socket, motion detector, 
a smart things hub and this allows all the devices to connect to each other right so a user is then able to issue commands or set up automated rules using the technology in this um, smart landing so the smart landing was mostly mostly util utilized by staff with a high mobility profile remember we looked on that earlier you know where the timid the timid traveler and therefore and those kinds of um, persons so this table here shows the mobility um, profile of each of the members in the office and um, you can see that in the list here so in summary the smart landing was well received among staff um, especially with the added um, internet of things capabilities um, through observation and interviews, I observed that the area in which the landing was, was placed, it experienced an increase in staff usage over time. The observation was accomplished by using 24-7 uh, camera recording and motion capture um, tools. So throughout the period of the intervention, um, the usage of the smart landing trended upwards with the lowest usage on Mondays and the highest usage on Fridays, right? Um, the Alexa became very useful for quickly accessing date and time when employees needed to be registered for work. Um, and in addition to this, the landing facilitated a place to enjoy music, maybe a newspaper and a cup of coffee, especially for the editor-in-chief, which by the way, has the highest mobility um, profile. So in conclusion, an ABW workplace can provide us with a positive workplace experience. To fully utilize the ABW environment, one would have to adapt a mobile workflow. Now COVID-19 has already forced us to do this. Increased mobility is directly proportional to increase work complexity the more complex aka not mundane your work is the more mobility is required don norman the author of the design of everyday things speaks about the need to leverage technology to handle mundane repetitive tasks and position people to tackle more complex tasks that are natural to humans things such as identifying opportunities ideation collaboration motivation creativity if this is any indication our workplace should be trending towards the type that promotes the above traits and mundane monotonous work should be handled by the technology like the iot technologies that we saw i consider petty challenges such as physical forms that you have to fill out filing cabinets document folders and even location that you work it should never hinder the efficiency and the joy of our workplaces for those of us that has influence on how our workspaces is operated let us make it so people want to be there which will more imp which will be more important than ever in this COVID-19 please return to work period where employees are still very fearful for their health. Let's give a healthy work experience to return to. Thank you for your time.